Hey everyone, welcome to a Monday night version of our Power 36 and AP poll uh, to discuss. Um, we'll see if we've got any questions here on a late Monday night. Travel back to the East Coast. Um, so, a couple things for you. Number one, on the podcast, March Madness, Tuesday morning, March Madness 365, we will have Mike Boynton, Oklahoma State. As I'm taping, they're playing Texas Tech. Wichita State's Isaac Brown, the interim head coach for the Shockers. Um, it's the end of Black History Month. We talk about opportunities. Isaac Brown's got a great opportunity. I think he should be the head coach of Wichita State. He has deserved it. Keep in mind, when Greg Marshall was gone, Isaac Brown stepped into basically a new roster. They beat Houston. Right now, they're the best team in the American, and I've got them in my bracket that you will see tomorrow. That's the other thing to remember. Bracket coming out Tuesday. All right, Wichita State's going to be in it. That's a little tease for you. Mike Boynton, everyone said, oh, you shouldn't have the job. Don't, you know, don't hire him. He's done an outstanding job at Oklahoma State. As of now, they're in the NCAA tournament. The appeal is pending. Um, don't see it being heard in the next two, three weeks. Maybe I'll be wrong. So they'd be in it. Our player of the week, Noah Williams from Washington State. He had 40. Again, Stanford, a triple overtime game, 32 against Cal, 72 points. Last time a Washington State player had over 40 was 43 in 2011, Clay Thompson. Last time Washington State swept the Bay Area schools, 2012. Team of the Week, Michigan. They knocked off Ohio State on Sunday to secure that number one seed for the moment and the top spot in the Big Ten. Um, also, Mike DeCourcy from the Sporting News, Big Ten Network, Fox Sports, Bracketologist, he'll join me as well. Cats ranks. I'm going to take the top ten of the last Naismith winners and rank them. Because I said this on Big Ten Network over the weekend. If I had to vote today, you can say this is a cop-out, but I actually would go Io and Luca, co-Big Ten, uh, co-Big Ten and National Player of the Year. We could have a scenario that happened in 2002. Uh, my colleague Stephen Bardo from BTN, he had... Io on Sunday night during his broadcast as Big Ten Player of the Year. I could see Io Big Ten Player of the Year, Luca Garza National Player of the Year. That could happen. 2002, Juan Dixon, ACC Player of the Year out of Maryland, Jay Williams out of Duke, National Player of the Year. All right, I want to. I, I, I'm seeing questions here. I want to throw this um, out there to to diffuse it, and I got to remember. I got to remind everyone here. You're going to all hammer me about the Power 36 and why certain teams aren't in. And then you're going to see my bracket on Tuesday, and you're going to say, how could they not be ranked? You've got them with a decent seed. I'm going to say this time and time and time and time and time and time again. Polls are a snapshot. How are you playing right now? Tennessee got rocked by Kentucky. Blown out. They're out of the poll. Virginia, horrible week. Lost by 21 to Florida State. Lost at Duke. Very average Duke team. They're out. Do I have them ranked decently or seated, I should say? Yes. Rankings are how are you playing right now? Okay? These teams are playing well enough to be considered ranked right now. This is not the seeding. Neither is the AP poll, by the way. So just keep that in mind. You know, these are for fun snapshots of our moment in time here. The bracket is what we all care about. We know that. That's the true picture of the body of work. But I'm sorry. Virginia and Tennessee are not playing well or were not playing well last week. That is the time period we're talking about. Kansas, for example, they were out. Now they're in. I still always had them seated pretty well. So keep that in mind um, before you bash me. I know it's coming. It is coming. Um, so here's Bryce. Let's go to some questions. What does Tennessee have to do to get back on track? Well, they got to defend. They got to go back to being a defensive, hard nosed team. That's what they were earlier when they won at Missouri. They did not defend against Kentucky. Mike says, How can Duke get in? They just got to keep winning. <laughs> um, oh, Brandon says, This guy, this guy has been diminishing Duke. This guy, uh, I may not have a lot of gray here, but I've been doing it for 30 years, this guy. So, uh, Brandon, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm not diminishing Duke. 
The facts are the facts. Okay? They're playing better, obviously. Um, but they weren't worthy enough to be in the poll based on what their record is. So I'm not bashing them. I still think Duke has a chance. Michigan State has a chance. Now, Kentucky has to win the SEC tournament because they're so far under 500. But you know what? If the tournament were today, the SEC tournament today, Kentucky, um, they could run the table in the SEC tournament. It's going to really help. They don't have to play four games versus three. Um, so we'll see. Caleb asks, how about Sparty? Okay, six games left. They got to go four and two. Can they steal one out of the Big Ten tournament to part of that? Possibly. I don't like the Illinois matchup at all. We're, you know, I think we picked this during the podcast. Kofi Coburn, I would assume those are the two places on the floor that are a problem for Michigan State. Big up inside. Obviously a playmaking guard. That's the two weak spots for Michigan State. So that's a major concern that I would have for Michigan State. But they can beat Indiana. They can beat Maryland. They haven't shown they can, but they could. Um... Got to find a way to maybe beat Ohio State and steal one Michigan game. That is a tall order to get four wins out of those six. But it is doable, and they have the opportunities. Uh, Tyree asked about North Carolina. I think that as of today, and you'll see my bracket on Tuesday, I have them in. Um, let's see. Let's see here. Um, Clay asked about Houston. I'm not feeling Houston right now, although I would say that um, Houston's overall record, their resume, will help them. But, um, you know, three losses in the American. Um, they're not the best team in this moment. I thought they were clearly the best team in the American. Wichita State is doing phenomenal, so... Um, Christopher has given us an update on USC over Oregon. Um, I love USC. I think Evan Mobley is a first team All-American. Um, Josh is shocked that I wish got Wichita State over Duke. They're in first place in the American. <laughs> um, is Belmont higher than a 10 seed? Probably not. I think I had Belmont as the, I don't have it here. Uh, I think I had him as a 12. Um, Philip wants to know what my thoughts on Loyola Chicago. They still have a couple pieces from their Final Four run. Cameron Crutwig has been there forever. Uh, look, that's a team that could win two games. I wouldn't be shocked uh, at all. Um, ask if Coach K could be Coach of the Year. No. If they made a run and made the tournament. Mm -mm. Uh, right now it's Jawan Howard from Michigan. Because here's the thing on Juwan Howard. First off, Mike Smith replaces Xavier Simpson. Seamless. Columbia transfer. Two, Chani Brown. Fifth-year guy from Wake Forest. Seamless. Three, Hunter Dickinson. Yes, he had talent. Juwan Howard's helped make him even better. He's one of the best freshmen in the country. Four, the veterans who played for Beeline, recruited by Beeline. They have just completely bought into everything Juwan is selling, essentially, or coaching. And five, if I'm on that, they dealt with a 23-day pause. It's one of the longer ones we've seen. And they came out in their 3-0 <laughs> and beat Wisconsin on the road and Ohio State on the road. So right now I'd give him the lean. My thoughts on West Virginia Baylor. If this game were in Morgantown, I think there'd be a lot of trouble for the Baylor Bears. Um, coming off a pause and going on the road, not easy. Excuse me. Um so I would say for Baylor, I'll be very interested to see what happens in the first half um, against West Virginia, because West Virginia is going to be physical with them. How do they handle that? And what players have told me is it's the conditioning that's a major factor in the first couple of games. That's the major factor at the beginning. So we'll see. Um Joe says, oh, does Oklahoma State uh, sneak in? Yeah, I got them in. And I hope they can stay in. Michigan, Illinois, better match to make a deep run. Um, 
Michigan defends better, so I would lean Michigan. Uh, and they have more weapons, but boy, Illinois is incredibly entertaining. I mean, Kofi Coburn, there aren't many players that look like him in terms of just the physicality and the, um, you know, ferocity that he dunks with. I mean, he's just a, he is a presence. Um, and a great young man. Both of them. I really enjoyed interviewing both of them. So I, I would definitely say that. Um, Tim wants to know how I feel about teams playing less games than others. We knew this was going to happen. We knew that this was a possibility. So, uh, you know, we, we thought it could happen. It is happening. And some of these leagues are going to, uh, have their, um, right, or their seedings for their tournament based on percentage versus win total. Um, and how they're seeded and selected will, it'll be unequal, but we knew that was the case. We knew that was a possibility, so we have to accept that. Uh, and I think it'll all even out, obviously, in the NCAA tournament. Um, let's see here. Uh, Arkansas. Um, oh, about Coach Few and Coach Drew. They're both right there for Coach of the Year, but I lean Juwan Howard right now. Um, Arkansas is in, in my opinion, right now. Big game against Alabama coming up. Uh, who's my sleeper who could make a run? Let's see my definition of a sleeper. Um, well, uh, I guess my run is getting to the Sweet 16. I could see Boise making the Sweet 16. I could see Loyola making the Sweet 16. Uh, I could see um, Maryland making the Sweet 16. I'm really high on Purdue. These are middle of the pack teams. Uh, I could definitely see them all winning two games in the NCAA tournament. If that qualifies for sleeper status. Um, Mike disagrees on coach of the year. Um, I, look, I, it could be Lon Kruger, could be Nate Oates. Um, I think it, it could be Chris Holtman, but I think it will come down to Juwan Howard and Mark Few ultimately. Uh, and so, well, let's see. Let's see how the last two weeks play out. Um, Minnesota still has great wins, even though they're really struggling. I've got them in. Florida State, how high can they get? I don't. They can't get to a one, I don't think, because the ACC is just not strong this year. Maybe the weakest been in a long time. So I have a hard time seeing Florida State climb all the way to the one line. I think the two is their height, and I think they could be the top two. Can Iowa win it all? Uh, Peyton wants to know. Uh, the question is, uh, the answer is yes, they can. What we saw the other night against Penn State is huge news for Iowa. C.J. Frederick um, scoring. That's big for Iowa. Jo joining Jordan Bohannon, Garza, Joe Wieskamp, um, Gigi Murray coming off the bench. They've got scores. If they can just keep defending, they got a chance. Uh, how many from the Big Ten? My gut is 10. I think 10 will get in. Um, so the four out, you know, at this moment in time, it would be Penn State, Nebraska, Northwestern, and Michigan State. Um, so we'll see. Uh, you know, I did say it's a tall order for what Michigan State would have to do to get in. Um, UNC is not a six or seven right now. They got to got some work to do to get up to that. Uh Eagles, Eastern Washington, yes. Big Sky champs, or, or that's where we're looking. Uh, my 512 upset, I gotta see the bracket. <laughs> I'm gonna see. Eddie, about the Gators. You know, the Gators are gonna be a team that could win a game, probably not two. They'll be in there. Um, somewhere in the eight to ten range, probably seeding based on their overall resume. That's probably where I see them. Um, all right, listen, I really appreciate everyone logging on here at night. Um, a little later than we like to do it, kind of my schedule and everything, but I appreciate it. A lot of content coming out tomorrow. Um, I just can't believe we got this week and next week. Some leagues are starting their tournaments this week. Then we got champ week, and let's just... Hope we cross that threshold. Just get past March 12th. We'll get to the 14th. 
and we'll get going in Indianapolis. Um, it's going to be like something we've never seen before, like everything this year. Just hope everyone's safe, uh, wearing a mask, and getting vaccinated when it's your turn. Because I can't wait to be in arenas when fans are going crazy. Uh, I went in person for Westwood One Thursday night for Iowa, Wisconsin, and uh, there's no one there. You know, I just can't wait till we can have fans again. So, fingers crossed. Stay safe, everyone. Be well.